What up, what up, what up, what up, y'all? I am your girl Candy, and I'm about to speak on it. I had already heard. I can turn a shade tree into a money tree. <laughs> oh, no, I cannot believe the last episode of The Shot has aired. I'm like, I did not want it to be over. It's kind of crazy because you know, I really love being a part of this show. Um, it, it was a great experience for it to be my first opportunity to be a recurring actress on the show because, I mean, I actually was a fan of that show and so it's really cool to be a part of it. The actors on the show are amazing. Okay, let me just start off with my uh, TV husband, Duda, AKA Otis, AKA in real life, Curtis Cook. Jake find that you killed his brother. You might wake up with a knife at your throat. He is an amazing actor. You know, he's obviously, he's been on a lot of stuff before me, so it was really cool to be able to work with him because he has so much um, experience as an actor. And I felt like sometimes when we were in scenes, it was just easy to play off of him and for me to just be the character because he was so good. Hey baby, long time no see. You know, sometimes like if you're acting or whatever, the person that you are in the scene with can really help you be a better actress or actor or whatever. For me, I definitely have to say that that is true. And in my case, much love to you, Curtis. I felt like you helped me be a better actress on the show and I appreciate that. Let's give God praise for bringing brother Ronald back to his faithful Amen. Amen. It's so funny because our first week of meeting each other we were taping two episodes that week so that the first two weeks of me being there we had to tape two different episodes so it was going back and forth from scenes from this episode and that the episode i remember we were going to have the actual um sex scene <laughs> um the second week that i was gonna be there so we had to meet with an intimacy coach we also so we had to talk through all the moves oh they gave us the option on if we wanted to do a rehearsal of that of course we wanted to rehearse because clearly i had never done a uh sex scene in a show before and neither had he and i really didn't know what to expect because initially when i signed on you know, they, had, they told me that it was gonna be nudity involved or whatever, and I wasn't really sure how much nudity. I just was kinda like going into it like, okay, I don't know if my body is ready for this, but you know, we gonna figure this thing out. Now for me, luckily, they did not have me really naked. It was more so like my skirt had to be hiked up and shirt open, whereas he was the one who really had to be naked. <laughs> But he did have on a jock strap, so I didn't see his actual, you know, you know. But, you know, I saw his body, I just didn't see his, you know, you know what I'm saying? Now, the thing about it, for those of you who may be curious, um, they do have some cushion between you and the other person. So even though you're humping on each other, you don't necessarily feel everything, right? And the other thing about it is, you know, it was funny when I was going back and reading like a lot of the comments after that episode, everybody was like, I was expecting more. Some people was like, ooh, I can't believe he was down in your legs. Ah. Ain't got time. Anyway, for those of you who were expecting more, shit, so was I. Because, I mean, I'm, you know, to be quite honest, I felt like we taped a little bit more. You know, it was a lot more choking, a lot more aggressiveness, um, biting of the ears, and, you know, doing all of that stuff. You know, it was a lot more. <laughs> Let me just say that. The point was still made. I mean, you still got across whatever they was trying to get across, so we didn't need all the extra, I guess, to get the point across, which worked out fine for me. It's kind of just funny because I just didn't even know what to expect. My husband didn't know what to expect. Bless his heart, child. He was trying to be supportive. And um, I think at times he was feeling a little like, mm. yeah, so you have to, I guess, watch Housewives this year because I mean, obviously we will um, have to address certain things because 
we were actually taping the new season of Housewives when that episode aired. So we actually have a discussion about it there. So you can just watch it then. And then I'll tell you more about it later when you watch it on Housewives. And then I can tell you the backstory of how that conversation went. Anyway, I'm glad I made it through that part. But as far as the overall season, I just felt like I really, really loved the way that my character came off. I felt like Rosalind was cool. You know, you could tell she was a bad bitch and there's so much more room for her to, my character to grow on the show. So I'm hoping and praying, fingers crossed, that they would love to continue to keep Rosalind on the show into the next season. Now, they have not greenlit it publicly or anything like that, but I'm just going to speak into existence that there will be a season four of The Shot and that Rosalind, AKA me, will be on it. How about that? So, clearly, I've been a bad girl. All right, uh, well, my husband, voila, Otis Perry is now the mayor of The Shot, okay, which is, it, that's gonna be interesting in itself, trying to figure out where that story is about to go. But then the other part of it is I did him dirty. I was the one trying to make him lose, you know. I, I was the one that got Jake and everybody to send all this information to Lena's character, uh, Camille. And, but Camille didn't use the information that we gave her, so she lost. So now I'm trying to figure out where does that leave Otis Perry and Rosalind? Is he gonna act like he doesn't know that she had something to do with it? Are they ever gonna let him find out that she had something to do with the things that happened to him? Or are we gonna continue where we know that she did him dirty, but he ain't gonna know? Like, how is that gonna work? It's just like, they just leave us hanging on that note but then on the other side of that coin you know you find out you know Keisha's pregnant is she gonna keep the baby what happens in a situation like that when you have been basically raped by your captor but you end up being pregnant in that situation like what do you do so it was just um I definitely feel like they left the last episode in a way where you are really wanting to know what's next. But with the other characters, I, I would definitely have to say, I really love the other storylines that were on the show as well. Like, I always love the kids on the show. Since season one, since I've been watching, they are my favorite characters on the show. Jake and, um, excuse me, Jake was my stepson, so of course I, he's the first one to come to mind. But all the boys on the show, they just really great actors, and I feel like they're so dope. And I just, I'm entertained whenever I see them on the screen. Keisha's character, that character, she was very um, prominent through the whole entire season. She was like the main storyline. Her being kidnapped. Hey bro. Have you seen this girl? She went missing from this bus stop about a week ago. Trying to figure out what's gonna happen to her after. Good for what? all of that stuff like that story was it was very scary because nobody wants to see anything like that happen to someone that they care for their own child anybody that you love it's it's something that would make you be afraid but at the same time it's something that actually happens in real life. We hear about those stories all the time, but this time we were actually able to see it. Like almost every day I see something about human trafficking or a black woman going missing. Your child is my child. These kids belong to all of us. And then see how the family handles it after the fact and what could happen from there. So I just feel like that whole storyline, it was a really, really good story. And it's just so dope. The writers on this show, Kudos to you. Great job. And that's all I can say. Great job. Keep me in mind, you know? <laughs> Great job, though. I mean, it's been so cool. It's a lot of stories that I would like to see more of, particularly me and Duda. But, um, and also Duda's mom. Like, she was my favorite character, and she was only there on one episode but she is like my favorite on the entire season. Like her 
scenes were so powerful. She's a phenomenal actress and I would love to see her uh, again in season four. She's so dope. I definitely was a newbie this year. Everybody knows I was new to the season, but also la la. Oh wait, and make sure that you post on social media so we could get to trending and we could be on Oprah's favorite things and really blow up. Luke James, Jasmine, AKA Imani on the show. They were all new characters to the new season of the, sh well, the season three of The Shy. And everybody was phenomenal. I felt like it was kind of unknown. People were kind of like, okay, after the changes that they made after the previous season, season two, a lot of people was kind of like, not sure of what they were gonna think about season three. How does it feel to be a year older? I learned that not everything stays the same. But I felt like, you know, all the new people, the new cast, I felt like it definitely added uh, some cool new stories. Don't worry. We got this. New flavor and, you know, it just really added to the show continuing on to be great. Y'all want me to evict Sonny? We the next generation. We the next generation? This ain't Star Trek. I loved Trig and Imani's storyline. I would love to see more of it in season four. As well as, okay, let me just say, Lala and Jacob Lattimore. <laughs> what I gotta do to make it come work for me? Do I need to pummel your feet? Kiss your pinky ring? What? Or your scalp, I'll do anything. I'll do that shit. What are we gonna call it? Gotta be inspired. Let me know if you need some inspiration. They was getting hot and heavy, okay? <laughs> and um, I wanna see what's gonna happen with that. Like, is she gonna continue to be his business partner as well as secret lover? Or is she just gonna cut him off on the lover side and just be business partner? It's just so many things I feel like that the people want to know, okay? I definitely want to know. Um, and then the other thing that's really cool, I don't know if you've, if you guys paid attention, but on episode one, there is a wedding and a funeral. Are you pregnant? No, fool. Ooh, thank God. If I was, it wouldn't be yours. Okay, and they're going to end the season with a wedding and a funeral. We know that even if we are absent from the body, was still present with the spirit. Amen? Amen. You have Jacob and hit, oh, excuse me, Jacob Lattimore. Why do I keep calling? See, I know Jacob in uh, real life, so it's hard for me to call, call him his character name. But anyway, his character <laughs> is getting married um, in this episode. It's one thing I gotta do. I ain't gonna lie. I never thought I'd ever be down here. So he gets married, but then we see Ronnie is buried. Do you accept the Lord Jesus, my brother? And so it's it's kind of like, you know, the, that's the writer's way of really um, taking this full circle. And I don't know if everybody's gonna pick up on that, but it was intentional and you guys need to pay attention. Um, Rosalind and Duda have a very tumultuous re relationship. Um, if you look at, or if you even pick up on any of the things that they said in the um, past, some of the things they didn't really, get, you know, they didn't show you guys, but, um, cause I know a lot of people are like, well, what's the backstory? They have been married and actually in the story they gave us, they were married for a very long time. They kind of like grew up together. She looked at him. You know, he always felt like she just, you know, looked at him as like a loser. She's like a lawyer. They didn't even really touch on that. Something that he said to her that you guys never got to see because they didn't air it. He said, oh, I see you're not um, chasing ambulances anymore. And she basically is like, yeah, now my clients are chasing me. So basically her whole reason for coming back 
was she found out he was running for mayor. She told him like she wanted to be first lady and the only way she felt like he could ever even have a chance at being mayor is if she came around. And basically she's supposed to have all these high powered connections. You know, she knows how to get him pressed. I don't know, remember when he's like, well, aren't you supposed to make that happen? You know, different things like, so she's a very connected woman. Another thing that I don't know if you guys picked up on, but um, I don't remember which episode it was, but they were sitting in the limo and he says, they're talking about him becoming this father to Jake. And she's like, oh, now you wanna be a daddy. That one line, it lets you know that there was something in their own relationship where he was not allowing them to have a family. And clearly it's something that she still is holding, on, holding grudges about. She hasn't been around for a minute, but she's been doing her thing wherever that, that is, wherever she is. And uh, pretty much she feels like she runs shit. And if you notice, she's the only person that can challenge him in the way that she has challenged him which I think is really cool because in season two, he, they really showed him as this bad ass, you know, oh, he, you know, he, he plays no games. You don't want to try him. And in this season, they didn't make him as, you know, hardcore because it was more about him running for mayor. But you did see the one episode where he was beating the hell out of the dude in the um, alleyway. That guy is still there. And that's the guy that she grew up with. And, what she was described as is like basically she kind of grew up in the hood but she just went off and you know started doing her own thing so she knows how to play both sides she knows how to be with the streets if you you know she with she's with the shits if she needs to be but then she knows how to handle business and she's very calculated you know um <laughs> it's funny um who would i have voted for if this was a real thing and I was in Chicago. See, I don't wanna walk in front of you. I wanna walk alongside you because we're all in this together. Our ancestors built this city brick by brick with bloody hands. And how dare we spill each other's blood on the streets they marched on? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I would've voted for Duda because he's very good at playing the role of, oh, I'm the good guy and I'm trying to help the community. Um, that's what he's shown the community. I mean, only the people who are, you know, got their ear to the streets really know what's really going on. So if you're just the average person, you look at, oh, he has, you know, he's helping the community. So, whereas he already put her on blast, I mean, he put Camille on blast as this, you know, person who's not honest or whatever. And, you know, then the time that she did try to like, you know, bring his mom to do him dirty he even found a way to get out of that situation i think the thing they kind of touched on um is you know sometimes the things that happen in a tv show can imitate real life and that is um, the current mayor of chicago is an openly lesbian woman who um, runs that city and she she's very strong and she's very intelligent i think her sexuality should not matter when it comes to her running the city, but clearly, you know, people have definitely um, made it a point to make it known that, you know, her, what, what her sexuality is. So I think it was kind of interesting that Camille, who was also running for mayor in the show, um, was an open out lesbian woman who is strong and intelligent or whatever. So kind of like art imitating life, but unfortunately on this show, she did not win. <laughs> well, I think that's about it. Anything else, I guess we'll just have to wait to season four. All right. So everybody go to, um, this is what I always want everybody to do. Show some love to the shy, send out a tweet on Twitter and Hit up the hashtag the shy and just tell everybody how much you love the show. Okay, just do that for me. I appreciate it. Just one tweet. Just let everybody know you love the show. Until next time, make sure you subscribe, like, share, get the alerts, do all of that. And thank you for watching. Speak on it. This city wasn't meant to be a jungle. There's so much more than that. If you're with me, let me get an amen. <laughs>